Hey, my name is Chris and welcome to Cross Chop. As you can probably tell by looking around in here, I'm smack dab in the middle of leveling up my game room. And I figured before I relocate some of the games that are in here over to new shelving, I thought I'd take a few minutes to try something a little different and show you my entire 4K, standard Blu-ray and DVD movie collection. Come here, C come here. All right, guys, as you can see, I keep all of our movies over here on this tall, narrow shelf. And as you'll quickly be able to tell, I've dedicated the topmost section exclusively to horror. I've put some other horror films on a few other shelves, as you'll see later in the video, but probably 90% of them are up here. I've been a horror fan for a long time, but my appreciation for these kinds of movies really increased in high school and has grown year after year. I began acquiring more movies in general, probably around three or four years ago. And although I don't keep every movie after I've watched it, I've got a couple hundred releases in this shelf and somewhere between three and four hundred total physical discs. Not totally sure, but that's in the ballpark. As a kid, I was generally afraid of horror of any kind, but I was still fascinated by monsters, mystery, and especially by vampires. A lot of these old Hammer films we're looking at here are pretty hit or miss, but I still love watching them and some of the old Universal movies to look back at how horror has changed over the past hundred years or so. This front section of discs on the left consists of collections of two or more films grouped by distributor. This organization method is far from perfect, but it's worked well enough for my needs. It's also not necessarily a hard and fast rule. As you'll see, there's some multi movie collections behind these as well, but they had to go somewhere and it's easy to remove these to get to the stuff behind them. Probably around a year ago, I began acquiring a few 4K Blu-ray releases here and there for some of my favorite films in horror and other genres. I've upgraded some movies like American Psycho, Dracula, and these Evil Dead discs from standard Blu-ray to 4K, while others were my first copies like Halloween 1978 and Hereditary. While we're talking about Hereditary, that's become one of my all-time favorite horror films, so if you're looking for a good two hours of dread and discomfort, this one comes highly recommended. Up here at the top, we've got our Universal Monsters collections, comprised thus far of Dracula, the Mummy, and the Wolfman. Eventually, I'd like to get the Frankenstein, Invisible Man, and Creature from the Black Lagoon sets, too. This movie is from Lucio Fulci, a divisive Italian director mostly known for his horror films in the 1970s and 80s. What his best film is depends on who you ask, but a lot of folks like The Beyond the best. I personally found City of the Living Dead more frightening and memorable, and I think Don't Torture a Duckling from 1972 was a really solid mystery thriller. That one's probably my favorite if I had to pick one. I've got a few other horror releases from Arrow Video, who does really nice work restoring old films and re-releasing them with modern bells and whistles. Below those, we get into more standard Blu-ray fare that includes some classics like Army of Darkness, Basket Case, and Creepshow. And then we've got a series of vampire movies, most of which have Dracula in the title. Horror of Dracula, Dracula Has Risen from the Grave, and Taste the Blood of Dracula are all Hammer productions with Christopher Lee embodying the Count. Some of these are better than others, and I discovered that the Dan Curtis Dracula, an adaptation made for television, is actually quite good. Moving on, a couple other honorable mentions have to go to Event Horizon and Invasion of the Body Snatchers, another favorite starring Donald Sutherland. Midsummer, another recent film I really enjoyed. I think I liked Hereditary a little better, but it's a very different film and stands on its own feet just fine. The 2018 Suspiria remake. In truth, it's really a new story that taps into some of the elements within Dario Argento's original. I remember thinking it was okay, but I need to give it a rewatch sometime. Werewolf Woman. This is an interesting one, too. And just look at that puppy! Let Me In and Let the Right One In, two versions of a dramatic vampire story. I preferred the original Let the Right One In, but the American remake was alright. Mandy with Nicolas Cage, Maniac Cop with Bruce Campbell, The Monster Squad, and The Mummy, starring Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee in different roles than their usual casting as Van Helsing and Dracula, but with the exact same kind of relationship. I dig this movie. By contrast, this movie is bad. It's about a town overtaken by giant killer rabbits. The premise may sound hilarious, but the movie itself winds up being wholly uninteresting. Gotta give a few shoutouts to One Hour Photo, The Inimitable Plan 9 from Outer Space, Return of the Living Dead, The Thing, and of course, Young Frankenstein. Frankenstein. And lastly, Zombie, another Lucio Fulci cult classic. Moving downward, the next section is dedicated to predominantly action and sci-fi movies, but you'll see some exceptions along the way, I'm sure. 
There is, of course, some crossover with horror right up front, in fact, with this trio of John Carpenter steelbooks. My undisputed personal favorite of these three is They Live. You're the hunter from the future. <laughs> this movie is ridiculous. It has some hilarious moments, but gets pretty dull at different points and feels like other post-Star Wars fantasy films of the time that desperately wanted some of that sci-fi market share. Robin Hood, The Crow, The Doors, Forbidden Planet, an early Leslie Nielsen film. I could be mistaken, but I think this was only his third movie. Longtime favorite here with Galaxy Quest and probably my favorite Tim Allen movie. There are some incredible moments in this movie, but this one is the best. <laughs> Malibu Express has some of the humor and stupidity of Hard Ticket to Hawaii, but I didn't find it quite as memorable. I'm a big fan of Ray Harryhausen's work on these and so many other classic adventure flicks. And if you haven't seen Samurai Cop, you must. It's guaranteed to be unlike any other samurai movie out there. On the third shelf down, we've got even more fantasy, action, and adventure stories, including some box sets and multi-movie packs. On the right, we've got a 4K Jurassic Park pack, that has the first three films in the first Jurassic World installment. And then the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man trilogy on 4K. I watched these with my wife pretty recently, and while the first two remained pretty fun and endearing, the third one felt worse than I remembered when I saw it on its theatrical run. Yikes. Back here, we've got Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, The Hobbit trilogy, the 90s Batman movies. Speaking of these, I like the first two a lot, but Batman Forever and Batman and Robin are almost unwatchable especially Batman Forever. The Predator trilogy, most of the mainline Star Wars movies, and then over here are my Criterion Collection discs. Of course, something like The Blob is classic science fiction, and I could move it up a shelf to sit beside other sci-fi flicks, but I wanted to keep all the Criterion stuff in one place. Most of the Criterion releases I go after fall into sci-fi and horror anyway, and I don't have a ton of them, so it's still super easy to find what I'm looking for. One exception I love is Tom Popo. This is an excellent Japanese movie about the art of making ramen. It's very funny, and I have fond memories of experiencing it for the first time in high school with my friends in our Japanese class. I hadn't seen Peter Jackson's King Kong in many years, so I rewatched it a couple months ago when I bought this 4K edition. It's still a fun adventure movie with some unforgettable sequences, but some of the CGI admittedly has not aged as well as we'd hope. It's not terrible in my opinion, and has never been as egregious as some of the CGI in the Brendan Fraser Mummy movies I've been revisiting recently, but it was nevertheless a bit worse than I'd remembered. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, a must. I'd read somewhat recently that Peter Jackson was talking about releasing new 4K transfers of The Lord of the Rings, as well as some of his older films like Bad Taste and Brain Dead slash Dead Alive. So I'd love to upgrade this collection and grab copies of those other films eventually too. I used to have the extended editions of these movies on DVD, but I wound up selling those some years ago to declutter, free up space for games, and upgrade most of my DVDs to high definition. Before we take a proper look at the stuff in the back on this new shelf, this stack here is more or less my self-imposed backlog of stuff I want to watch for the first time or revisit for the first time in years. I've recently rewatched the first two Mummy movies in this set, along with The Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, so I've just got The Scorpion King left. The Mummy and The Mummy Returns came out when I was in middle school and are definitely more primitive in the special effects department, but they're still a fairly good time. Got a cool Stanley Kubrick 3-pack here that I bought a long time ago in a Best Buy bar bin. Since I watched The Shining last Halloween on the new 4K release, I'll be skipping it in this set and going straight to A Clockwork Orange and 2001 A Space Odyssey. I haven't seen Clockwork since college, and I'm sad to admit that I've not watched 2001 from start to finish, so I'm eager to fix that very soon. I've seen the first two seasons of Ash vs. Evil Dead, and I liked them a lot. I've waited to check out season three ever since the show was canceled, so as a longtime Evil Dead fan, I'm long overdue on wrapping up this series. I may just need to watch all three seasons in succession for good measure. Season 2 of Dragon Ball Z. I rewatched the first season a couple of years ago, and although I cannot at all claim to be an anime fan, what young lad in the 90s didn't rush home from school to turn on Toonami and see how Goku and friends would save the universe again and again? The Godfather Collection. So far, I've only seen the first one, and the wife and I need to carve out a few hours to watch part two. Another Criterion set, Yojimbo and Sanjuro. I've seen Yojimbo once, back in high school, so I'm eager to watch that story with fresh eyes, and Sanjuro will be brand new to me. Ah, here's a Hammer collection that will eventually accompany those other Hammer flicks up above. I've watched two of these eight films so far, Brides of Dracula and The Curse of the Werewolf, so I've got many hours of Hammer happiness ahead of me. 
I picked up this set very cheaply at Vintage Stock two or three years ago. I've seen The Departed a long time ago and have more recently watched The Untouchables, but I've never seen the other three films. Woof. Lastly, we've come to Shrek. And what else can I say? I love me some Shrek. With my backlog out of the way, this section is largely where comedies, animated and family-friendly movies, and other dramas converge. It doesn't make a ton of sense, but these are ones that seem like they should be kept separate from the action, sci-fi, and horror stuff. My wife rarely buys any movies anymore, but she's purchased probably 15 or so of the titles you're seeing here. I've had these Monty Python discs for years, and they're among my favorites to have on hand in our house. Holy Grail was my introduction to Monty Python and remains my favorite of these three, followed by Meaning of Life. I know a lot of folks like Life of Brian best, and I love that movie too, but there's something in the pure, absurdist flow of Meaning of Life that's always resonated with me the most. Toy Story of Terror is a fun Pixar short film that completely flew under my radar until perhaps four or five years ago. We picked this up from Half Price Books and enjoy the feature and other included shorts so much that they're a regular staple of our Halloween movie sessions. Spirited Away, considered one of the greatest animated films ever made. I like this movie a lot, and what I'm about to say may be blasphemy to some, but I adore my neighbor Totoro, and I have to admit that I actually prefer it to Spirited Away. I know, I know. They're completely different movies with very different intentions, of course. That's just my two cents. Up top on the right, we've got the full slate of Harry Potter movies that I fished out of my favorite Blue Lagoon, aka Best Buy Bargain Bin circa 2014. And down below is our tiny little Toy Story box set. Don't blink or you'll miss it. Bottom left, another favorite is Tim Burton's Ed Wood, an excellent film about the unflappable man who went on to create the beloved Plan 9 from outer space. This movie doesn't really feel like a Tim Burton flick to me, but all the performances are wonderful and the movie is genuinely funny and charming. If you want the full Ed Wood experience, you should watch this one, and then watch this, and then watch this again. Also in this row, we've got The Indian in the Cupboard, a movie I watched repeatedly as a kid, and one that I received a VHS copy of for the Christmas of 1997. I know that's very specific, and I only know this because there's a short video of this event that you can see by clicking this annotation right up here. The Land Before Time, a movie I've seen more times than perhaps any other, and I think the first VHS tape I was ever gifted as a wee lad. The animated Lord of the Rings adaptation. I watched this maybe a month ago and overall was pretty impressed by it. It's very long, clocking in around 2 hours and 20 minutes, but it's remarkable how similar some of the shots are framed in this to some of the cinematography in Peter Jackson's trilogy from the early 2000s. The image on the back of the Black Rider, for example, was obviously an influence on the framing and set design in this scene in The Fellowship of the Ring. Pretty cool movie overall, and definitely worth a watch if you're a Lord of the Rings fan. It's been a little too long since we've looked at a bad movie, so here's Mac and Me. I think this movie is a guilty pleasure for a lot of people, myself included, and I'm forever grateful to my friend Heath for introducing me to the joy of Mac and Me back in probably 2006 or so. If you like Coca-Cola, McDonald's, synchronized flash mobs within a McDonald's, or seeing a teenage boy race down a hill and fly into a lake, Mac and Me is calling to you. Moving down another level, these titles are where we start getting into more DVDs, and as you can see, it's largely animated films and Christmas and holiday staples. A handful of these are DVD and Blu-ray combo releases, thankfully. These two Christmas packs are fun to bring out at the end of November and revisit stuff like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And if I had to pick two favorite Christmas movies, here they are. It seems like I typically wind up seeing Christmas Vacation three or four times during the holidays, and It's a Wonderful Life has been a must-watch for probably more than 15 years for me. The Jim Carrey Grinch adaptation is my only 4K Christmas movie so far, and it's one that I actually disliked the first time I saw it. Upon another viewing, and many more after that, I realized I really liked it, and it's become a holiday standard too. I've also managed to sneak a couple of horror movies into this section. I wasn't crazy about Red Christmas, but Silent Night, Deadly Night is pretty good fun. Now I just need to get its sequel to properly enjoy this infamous scene. Garbage day! Down here, we're looking at all the other DVDs in our collection, most of which are dramas and a handful of TV series. Almost all of these are my wife's purchases of yesteryear, but there are several I've held on to, like The Room and these two seasons of Wild Boys. 
I did this simply because I didn't feel that a Blu-ray upgrade was really necessary, or in the case of Wild Boys, Blu-ray isn't available. In any case, you can click one of these boxes on screen to see even more cool stuff around my game room, and please subscribe to stay in touch and have more new videos come your way. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.